School committee meeting of May 14th. Um, could we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Um, so the school committee will be in person for school committee members and the public. A remote option will remain available for community members unable to attend in person. Join from a PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or Android. Please click the URL on the agenda on the website if you would like to join that way. There is a student advisory. There she is. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Molly Keefe, take it away. Welcome. First, do you want to tell us why you like this? What? Do you want to tell us why you like this? You look oh, like you're I'm, on I'm on the steamship back home after a meet. What kind of meet? I had a sailing meet. How'd it go? We won. Yay. <laughs> And you're un I, is it true the rumor is true you're undefeated? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Please tell us the Falmouth High School update. Tell us all the things. Okay. The FHS cheerleaders are collecting medical supplies for Ukraine and need enough to fill one U-Haul, which will be driven to New York on Memorial Day weekend. Um, the, the senior art show is currently up at Highfield Hall. This is open and free to the public. Spring sports are slowly coming to an end. As of today, sailing is 8-0 and first in the league. The spring awards night is June 13th at 7 p.m. And just before that, the 2024 fall sports meeting with coaches will take, meet the coaches night will take place. The yearbook deadline is May 31st and they are each $100. Um, seniors who are planning on a Playing a sport in high school, then college, please go to the auditorium on May 21st, right after school. Um, and they're still looking for after prom volunteers. Very That's good. May we I have, please, we have some questions from the audience. Um, okay. Molly Marie, did you enjoy your trip to Boston? Oh, yes, I did. What did you do there? <laughs> We visited the um, Auschwitz Exhibit Museum um, at Boston, um, I believe last Monday, I think, or Thursday. It was Thursday, yeah. Yeah, I went yes. as a chaperone on that. Um, and there were, the teachers, the English department did such an amazing really? job to get the entire freshman class, where there haven't been a lot of field trips lately, so it's just, it was so great that the entire freshman class could go and they were so well behaved, um, including Molly Marie. She was well behaved <laughs> too. <laughs> Very good. Any other questions or comments? All right. Seeing none, thank you. Enjoy your boat ride. Bye. Thank you, Molly. Molly bye. Thank you. bye. <laughs> She's all right, that kid. Let's keep her. All right, moving on to public comment. Members of the public are welcome to speak about items that are not on the agenda. Comments should be limited to two minutes in length. Due to open meeting law, the committee cannot act on public comment. For items on the agenda, the chair may accept comments from the public following the committee's decision on an item. Additional comments and feedback can also be submitted by email to school committee at falmouth.k12.ma.us. Do we have any <coughs> public comment? Kari, please. Hello. I'm just more comfortable doing music. I love it. <laughs> and speaking, so hope you don't mind. I wrote you a song. Everybody. That's nice. 
um, of the talk. But first, I know the clock is ticking. Um, the American Medical Association says that lack of sleep hinders the development of the brain's frontal lobe and leads to risky behaviors. But our teens can't fall asleep when we want them to. Their sleep is delayed by the hormone melatonin. And here's my song for you. <clears throat> they say it takes four hours, four hours, a teenage brain has a four hour delay. That means it's like I'm waking him up at 2 a.m. And 2 a.m. is no time to start your day. What's a mom to do? My name is Glenda Cohen, and I'm running for one of the open seats on the Falmouth School Committee in the May 21st election. First, I want to thank the current school committee members for doing this important work of supporting our Falmouth students. I have seen through my more than 20 years as a classroom educator and as a parent just how critical a school committee is to the success of students. You volunteer your time to share your insights and experience. You represent different community viewpoints. You oversee the budget and policies of the district. And most importantly, you show that you believe in public education. So I thank you all for the important work that you are doing. If I'm elected, I will be a collaborative and productive member of the school committee district leadership team. I would support programs and policies that encourage the growth and achievement of all students, both through academics and extracurricular activities. And I would support the voices of teachers who are the experts on shaping the future of our kids. It would be my honor to be sitting with you at the next school committee meeting in two weeks. So I humbly ask for the community's vote on the 21st. Thank you. Seeing none. Next up, we have presentation of Tea Ticket School highlights. Yeah. 
Okay, so welcome to the uh, tea ticket school. We'd like to share our clippership challenge as our tea ticket highlight. I'm Sandy Capsimbellis, the principal here at the Tea Ticket School, and Ms. Riolo is our library tech teacher. And then we can introduce our students. You want to say your name and what grade you're in? I'm in Jackson from Seneca. I'm in fourth grade. I'm Catherine Jacobs from third I'm Eve from this month in third grade. I'm Maximilian Humphrey and I'm in third grade. I'm Jay Staten and I'm in second grade. I'm Griffin Cashman in second grade. I'm Lucas Robinson with a K. Never forget the K or else bad things will happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're excited to, um, to present to you one of our after school activities. So at the Tea Ticket School, we have some before and after school activities that are um, at a very um, menial cost for eight weeks, families can pay $15 for students to participate in a before or after school activity. We have scholarships for families as well. And the variety of activities span from sports like soccer and volleyball and running club to Lego club, uh, fun with food, learning Portuguese. We have a, a large variety. And Ms. Riolo decided to do an activity that aligned with the STEAM fair. And so at this year's STEAM fair, there was going to be the opportunity for students to participate in a clipper ship challenge. So not all students might have the opportunity to make a boat at home and at school, they had the opportunity to do this. So these are a few of our participants who participated in the fair. Oops, sorry. Okay, so Ms. Riolo is going to talk a little bit about the design process. So when I heard about the STEAM Fair and I saw that there was going to be a boat building challenge, I was particularly excited because I saw it immediately as an opportunity for my students to learn about the design process. And the design process is basically a very um, short problem solving model where students can learn how to persevere when challenges don't exactly work the way they thought they might the first time. And they also get to work how, learn how to work together as a team, how to collaborate, how to communicate together and how to overcome obstacles as a team. Um, and most importantly, how to um, give and take a little bit during this design process as they're working as a team. So our students are going to share a little with you about the process. So Catherine is going to talk about the the materials. So there were requirements to participate in the clipper ship challenge. What kind of things did you guys have to consider, Catherine? Uh, well, first we had a list of items we had to use. We had a aluminum foil, cardboard, glue or tape, thawed plastic straws, decorations, not affected quality, and no. Nope. Most of us really picked the cardboard, probably the dot, the paper, straws, duct tape, tin foil, and cardboard. Okay. And so, in thinking about the actual design process, um, Lucas and Jackson are going to talk about how they designed their clipper ships, thinking about the materials they chose, the size, the shape maybe the weight and other factors. So Lucas, what, you want to show everybody your ship and what so, you're thinking about? My boat is called the SS Wolf. And for some reason, I covered up the title with some tape. So let me just peel that back so you can all see. And then I, and then I was going for, for more of a design meant to keep it afloat and not meant for like for speed. Like just keeping keeping it up, kind of. 
and there's and one material I second guessed myself on was wood because it soaks up water easily. But hey, whatever floats your boat. Show them the bottom there. What you made. All right. All right. Now, what did your team consider, Jackson? So we considered just as much. We just considered a weird design. We don't know why. Okay. <laughs> So we find we were trying to not do as compact as a boat because if we get it too compact, it won't float as much. Mm -hmm. All right, and I think you added some things to your boat as well. Yeah. You want to tell us about what you added to your boat? So we added the flag. Mm -hmm. People. People. You see people on there. Some of them have lost their face. <laughs> All of these boats have survived the competition. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. All right. So then Jason and Eve are also going to show us their boats that they worked on and made together and what they were thinking about. So some of the projects were group projects, and then some students worked on their projects individually. So, Jace, what did you want to share? So we wanted to do like a design thing to make it a little cool. So um, we made a plank. <laughs> so Thankfully, we didn't put that anchor on. <laughs> <laughs> and. We went a little too far with the tape, but it's fine. <laughs> we put a flag, and I don't know what happened to the coloring. It got wet, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Everything got wet. Oh, uh, the markers we used got smudged. Yes. Yeah. All right. And the faces. We put a flag round so it could at least float. All right. And yeah. All right, thank you, Jay. How about you, Eve? What would you like to share um, about your development there? We just, um, we put, like, we tried to make a kitchen that just, like, fell apart, though. Okay. And I'm just people, a flag, cardboard, tape, and all of my flag. Um, um, so we also made Walls, like colored walls. Colored walls. So part of the competition was not only for buoyancy, but also decorations in the names of the ship. So the students were considering all of those elements. So then it came to the actual penny challenge at the steam fair. So if anybody had gone to the steam fair, you would have seen the, the small, kind of like a, um, a kitty pool. Yes, and um, lots of pennies. And so, Max, you want to tell us about what it was like when you got to the competition? Well, when I got to a competition, I saw that everybody was making simple draft boats and seeing how many each draft boat could hold. Mm -hmm. Um, when the competition started, we um, went by grades. First was kindergarten, and then first grade, second grade, third grade, and so on. Mm -hmm. When it was my turn, I put my boat gently on the water. I made pockets in my boat for so that it could hold more pennies, but for this to work, I had to, to put one penny in each pocket before I moved on to more pennies in each pocket. Um, I think my boat holded at least 365 pennies on the oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> which was the most in Ridley actually is going to show his clipper ship as well. He did win 
in the uh, pre-K to second grade competition, so he did get an Amazon gift card. And, and how many pennies did you did your boat hold? I'm pretty sure three hundred and forty-seven. Three hundred and forty-seven. So it was pretty impressive. Do you want to talk about how you designed your boat? I tried to design it for speed. For speed. Buoyancy. And buoyancy. <coughs> Excellent. And what did you have as a decoration? A flag. Uh -huh. All right, so that is the conclusion of our clippership presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, Chris. Oh, Chris. Yes. Uh, what was the most fun part of this whole experience for you? Making the boats? Oh, you're going to say Gridley. Um, putting the pennies in. Putting the pennies in. What about you, Eve? Working together. Working together? Oh, nice. nice. How about you, Matt? Nice. Testing the boat. <laughs> Testing the boat. Mm -hmm. All right. There was a lot of competition. And I actually noticed that the parents were closing in <laughs> on the kiddie pool, too, when the kids were there, really trying to count out the pennies. Did they get to keep the pennies? Keep the pennies? That was just to give us money. I mean, I guess that was the point of the thing. Oh. Said, All right, we have one more question. After building these boats, would you ever try building a bigger boat? No. Yes. yes. <laughs> no. Possibly. Yes. Maybe, 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 maybe. Yeah. Also, yeah. can I have those three pennies? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, Please. Well, okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you will be making a recording. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Sorry to call you out like that. So, back to moving on to the CTE program. Hello. Hi. Um, so I'm uh, Dave Hearn. I'm a, a volunteer, and I am a member of the. CTE advisory board for the culinary uh, program. So I'm coming to talk about that aspect. And I'm Sam Goldstone. Um, I'm not sure if we're missing a few people, but it's okay. Uh, and I'm a student at Fountain High School, I'm a junior, uh, and I've taken six uh, CTE classes and plan on taking more next year. Would you like to start and then I'll? Yeah, I'll so the things up, yeah. I've taken um, three. Uh, computer science course, so AP Computer Science, Programming, and CAD. I'm in two this year, um, and I plan on taking uh, another one next year, whether that be Programming 2 or uh, another Computer Science course. Um, I think those that, that course is very important, and, and that sort of area of study is important, not just for kids who are looking to go into college for, for computer science or programming, but also in daily life. You guys are all computers, um, and so you know how to use them. Um, and classes like that also provide um, a place for teamwork uh, that I think we don't get in the rest of the school. Um, so I'm also part of uh, Mr. Brooks's um, shop. 
I've been in that since freshman year. I'm, I'm completing the pathway. Actually, missing the awards night tonight for this. Oh. Uh -huh. We thank you for being here tonight. Yeah, you're very lucky to have my presence. Here. <laughs> 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 uh, so it, all the way from woodworking one, woodworking two. Now I'm in construction, and again, it's it's life skills that you can't necessarily get anywhere else. Um, you know, I, I've had. Uh, grandfather, I've been lucky to have grandfathers um, and fathers who have been willing to um, build, you know, sheds with me. I've had I, my old house had a porch built solely by my uh, grandfathers, but I've never had experience doing stuff like that. Um, and a class like this is very helpful. Um, it, it also provides a time of my day where I'm outside of a classroom, outside of, um, you know, paperwork or a lot of time on the computer. We spend a lot of time on the computer today, during the day and I get to work with my hands. Um, I think a lot of kids really enjoy stuff like that and benefit from that. Um, so I have a few bullets about uh, collaborative's work from one or two disciplines with each other, but I, I wanted to talk, share a few stories about my own personal experience because I've been working with Mrs. Hackett and the Culinary Arts um, program since about 2017. So I, I'm a volunteer both at the Falmouth Service Center and at the Falmouth Senior Center. So it, it seemed like in addition to you know the obvious restaurants and uh, various kitchens and such around the town, there was an opportunity to partner with some of the work that takes place at the service center and at the senior center. So uh, and we've had some I, I think some really cool examples of that. So um, for a number of years now. At the Falmouth Service Center, um, mm -hmm. the culinary arts uh, students are making meals uh, and freezing them, and, and we provide them to our home, what we call our home delivery uh, clients, or the folk, basically shut-in folks that can't get to a pantry to get food. So they have the opportunity not only to get fruits and vegetables and, and non-perishables delivered, but they get ready-made meals prepared. Uh, not just any meals, but meals prepared by the culinary arts program. Uh, but another neat aspect of it that Mrs. Hackett has done is she's weaved that into uh, an international cuisine program. So, uh, for example, there'll be a Latin American theme and a, and, um, a Mediterranean theme and some other uh, cuisines that you could think about. And the students do the research on the recipes. The class votes on <coughs> And there's two classes that do this actually, but the classes vote on the recipes that they think are the best ones. Um, Mrs. Hackett and I collaborate and make a decision on what the recipe is going to be, and then they make um, sometimes as many as 100 meals. And we pick them up and we distribute them. And this has been going really since the, you know, since we recovered from the pandemic. We sort of pivoted from this fresh market program into this program. So it's been a, a really good example. But the students really connect and they understand what it means to uh, be serving, you know, a part of our community. So it's, um, I'm very grateful for it. And, and uh, more importantly, our clients are too. A um, couple other quick stories, if I have time. Um, at the Senior Center, um, we've, we've had a couple of programs because we started doing some um, cooking classes at the Senior Center in their kitchen. And again, um, I happen to be on the board of the COA, so um, I was able to look for opportunities. And Mrs. Hackett and I selected a couple of uh, her uh, students that have been through the entire curriculum of culinary arts and these students came in and sort of acted as, as sort of like a sous chef for these cooking classes and it was and i happened to be there too so it was marvelous because you know and this is part of the goal of the senior center is to get multi-generational things happening and get contact uh, amongst the different you know age groups and members of the community so um, Allie Eslick was the one who did a lot of, um, she's a student of Mrs. Hackett's, and she did a lot of this uh, partnership, helping out with these classes. So she connected with the students, uh, excuse me, connected with the senior center members that were taking this class. So in my mind, it was a real success. Um, and we're now continuing, as we continue more classes uh, in the fall, we're looking for more students to partner up on that. And the second example is, 
this past summer, uh, we had another student, um, Aubrey Costa, who came and volunteered as a regular member of the, uh, the lunch volunteer team at the uh, Chappie Cafe in the Senior Center. Uh, and it was one of the busiest days, and you know, people are off, all, the volunteers are off, so we desperately needed her help. And she was not just sort of a, a token member of this team, but she was in there prepping food and cooking food and serving food and stuff. So it was really good. So Mrs. Hackett and I are working on selecting at least one more volunteer to come this summer. So those are some examples of, you know, the kind of things that we can do in, in partnership. And I think, you know, there's more opportunities for that, too. Um, and I wanted to cite a few examples, too, from other um, collaborative work. So for example, the culinary arts and the food justice uh, teams, um, the, the food justice students were growing a, a good amount of vegetables. And so they worked with um, the culinary students and they cooked up um, a fall harvest meal, which apparently was quite successful. <laughs> um, I think Dr. Harris may know more about that one, but it sounded like it was a, it was a really good, successful collaboration. They did the same thing with a lot of the lettuce they grew, and they worked with the culinary students for that. Um, and it's not just culinary. I mean, I'm less familiar with that, but I know the marketing and restaurant management students worked. Um, they did a lot of market research to try to figure out what um, what kinds of snacks and what kind of beverages and things like that the staff and students were looking for uh, in the cafe, the Clipper Cafe at the high school. So um, it was a real uh, market research project and culminated in, I think, happy staff members and happy teachers and <laughs> things like that. So, and there's a number of um, collaborative things like that. There are, so I mean, aware that, you know, so we have uh, in a growing opportunity for kids. It, Mr. Mack describes it really well, talking to some entering ninth graders that we believe we are a school of and rather than a school of or. And there's multiple things that students can do and, and engage in. You can choose a career path, such as our construction pathway, our food science pathway, our child development pathway. You could also have a pathway and then engage in our business and marketing classes, right? So you can do child development, but also be taking business and marketing classes to be able to design and develop your own. And a really burgeoning partnership that is happening is the is the, the food and our uh, that area with uh, Dr. Harden's uh, food justice and climate piece and the expansion of that program and looking to expand that garden area out there and uh, including incorporating a science component next year as we as we build partnerships across our academic departments as well. I think the real asset we have in CTE is visionary leaders of these areas and thinking not only in where you know Mr. Campbell can take his program, which is one that really takes into a real academic area. We're increasing our AP offerings. His area will be the first one that offers an AP class for sophomores and eventually possibly freshmen, right? So it has that component to it as well, but then also how they look at how they cross and work together. Uh, a real big leadership project that Mr. Mack has done uh, and Mrs. Murray with Ms. Hackett, as well as students called a Grub Group and an Andrea in the food and, and Lori in our actual food service department, and really thinking about taking the Clipper Cafe, which right now, every morning at uh, 7.30, if you'd like a cup of coffee or a muffin or a breakfast sandwich, stop by and they'll serve you. Uh, and our teachers, as one teacher said, I woke up late, I couldn't make my stop. Thank goodness the Clipper Cafe is open. Um, looking at how they expand that eventually to offer offerings for students that don't compete with the food service piece. But also thinking about with the expansion of the, of the race, food and justice program and Ms. Hackett's program. And then the, as they be students have thought about creating more of a student, if you go come in our library, it's more of a student union feel to it, expanding and looking at how do we create an environment in our high school that's more flexible for students and has food and opportunities around what their needs and their wants are. And that's student driven, but it's closely connected to the offerings that we have uh, and what's happening in the CTE program. 
think uh, it's really exciting to see the range of students at the awards ceremony tonight. A lot of students weren't able to be there because they're in lacrosse and they have a job and they're in several other pieces that are part of the CTE program. And so CTE teachers are up there, not frustrated, but proud <laughs> that their students are in other things and in work that they have already been, been a part of and have done. And um, we're just really thankful. Many of them have these partnerships and advisories into the community that expand out. Uh, but I think we're really excited about the way that is growing and looking for the leadership for those uh, uh, teachers uh, to take their ideas and, and expand them out. I didn't even get into Mr. Weber's class and, and the things that he do, uh, but uh, we're very excited about where it is that we're headed and, and really good student outcomes and good community partnerships. Great. Any questions? Yeah, Wait, wait, I'll jump in with one. We've got a question. Well, um, Sam, I understand uh, some students are building, I know, and I don't get any information at home, so I have to ask them here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. <laughs> um, uh, that uh, I think it's some of, the, of Mr. Brooks' students are building uh, the compost bin container. Yeah, so. And wondering if there's any update on that. I, yeah, I, I missed. Um, a part sort of the, the two pathways I'm in, mean, which is a service to the school and the community around us. Um, I think Mr. Brooks, uh, that most a lot of you know that uh, uh, some of the students, myself included, are building uh, the shelter for the um, compost bin. I think that is almost finished. Um, I have worked on that for about a week and a half, but uh, that I think that's sort of a, a big part of what all this means is we have an ability to help you guys and help the rest of the school in it. It brings everybody together. Um, I know Mr. I was in uh, and Mr. Weber came um, asking for part for Mr. Campbell. Um, and, and believe it or not, you, you go around the school and there's you know, little, you know classroom to classroom and there's little pieces of plastic, they're 3D printed, um, doing everything, little brackets for computers or you know pieces on on whiteboards um, that I've seen. They're all printed house right at the school and completely custom. And I think, you know, that that ability to be self-sufficient and just, you know, make a product that we need or, or you know, uh, we were using uh, clamps from the shop, actually, Mr. Campbell's room uh, to fix computers to the tables or gluing them. So it's, you know, just this ability to have tools or resources, you know, all over the school um, is very helpful. Well, I just want to say thank you to the committee for supporting this because from the perspective of somebody in the community who is very passionate about these bills and things like that i appreciate the support it's it's and it's making a difference i think that's great, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, well, Mrs. Augusta, hold on. Are those descriptions available online for us to read all about them in the program of studies yes okay thank you Thank you All so much. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Moving on again, I don't know how we're going to top that. Uh, moving on to the first read of the ride share. We go from fun things right back into it, don't we? Okay. Not as exciting as CTE or buoyancy boats. No, <laughs> not at all. So this actually came about, um, even when I was principal at the high school, I saw a rise in um, students using ride shares, and I know elementary principals have even seen that. And then Lori, a few months ago, was at a conference where a lawyer brought up that it's a growing concern among school districts, and school districts really need to consider having a policy. So the bottom line is many parents are um, choosing to send their students to school or have in a ride share vehicle like an Uber or Lyft, or having a ride share vehicle pick up their students. Now, 
generally ride shares are not you're, if you're under 18 you're not supposed to be alone in a ride share vehicle although now in my doing research on this i have found there are companies in other parts of the state if not state other parts of the country that are specifically geared towards younger children and they have different regulations about what we don't have that yet in massachusetts so Basically, we can't prohibit a parent from having a children having a child arrive at school in an Uber or a Lyft, but we can not decide not to release a child alone to an Uber or a Lyft driver. The bottom line is our policy and our protocols are we only release children at dismissal time or any time during the day if they're getting dismissed to authorized adults that the, you know the parents give it's either a parent or a guardian or any other emergency authorized adult and a Lyft driver or Uber driver is not that adult. So there are real liability issues involved. So we drafted this policy to um, mention that, that we will not release to someone who's not an authorized adult unless there is another adult in the vehicle that is an authorized adult. And what we also want to take into consideration though at the bottom of is that if parents and guardians are having transportation problems, we want them to reach out to the building principal so that we can assist them in any way possible. I know even when I was at the high school, if I ever had a problem with a student with transportation, I uh, would call Greg Kennedy and just say, is there a car or a van or something available? And nine times out of 10, there was. So we'd rather encourage that safe transportation than um, have students getting into taxis or Uber or Lyfts with a, a strange driver that, you know, you know it just mm -hmm. is a risk. Yes, it's a risk. I keep seeing ads for them everywhere. I think it's worse. Um, great. Thank you, Mary. Any questions? <coughs> okay, seeing none. Um, act on the Charleston refrigerator at <laughs> the high school as surplus. Right. Yes, so we have a uh, large um, refrigerator at the high school that uh, is no longer working and would cost us more to fix it than to replace it. So we're asking you to uh, vote tonight to uh, surplus this refrigerator so that we can move it out of the high school. So moved. Thank you, Margaret. Were you seconding? I'll second that. Thank you, Mike. I just have one question, if Please. I could. Yes. Um, the disposal of the refrigerator is being done by Outside company? Yeah, it's the uh, one that services our current, that we buy our current, current equipment from. They come in and take the old one off. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, that's it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. That's great. Moving on. Act on FEF teacher project grants for the remaining of 2023-2024 school years of $89,176. Who's taking that away? Motion to accept. All right, cool. Uh, second? Second. Make this. Any discussion? So is this in, in keeping with the new policy, this this will we just have to carry it through and then we'll Same move on. Same the next one as well? Yes. So I can mm -hmm. cover my two questions in one go? Yes, yes. ma'am. All right. Okay. All in favor? Uh, oh, sorry. Can you tell what the new the policy is? Just Yes, we can re review. Just we refresh our minds about that. it. All grants yeah. have to be approved by the school committee. And so with FEF grants, uh, all yeah, grants education. for educational purposes. Okay. <laughs> now, typically a grant is for educational purposes all gifts for educational purposes as well, but we have gifts that are not necessarily for an educational purpose. Um, you know, you donate a coat to a school, that's not an educational purpose per se. But grants, particularly we know the FEF grants, they are across the board for educational purposes. So this was a way to get them approved in a blanket manner so that every single time there's an FEF grant that doesn't have to be approved and wait for the school committee meeting. Um, so that's how it was presented. Yeah. I mean, I knew that from the policy. Like, I just wanted to. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. don't usually yeah. see those. So yeah. this is why we're seeing them now, because it's a new policy that we have. And that came from the state. Better. Um, 
I mean, in this case, it's FEF. I very much trust FEF and have no concerns about accepting uh, project grants from FEF. But in general, I think if we're going to be responsible for approving receiving grants, it would be nice to at least have a, a title, some description of what the grants are that we're accepting. Um, so. So we did um, agree with FEF that we would not get into the um, to the business of approving the grant because that's their it's always been their purview, uh, but just accepting the dollar amount in, which um, is pretty much the same that we have been uh, in practice in the past of accepting grants or um, you know donations. Um, we've been never you know there are times that we really don't know much about them at all. There's been a lot of science grants that have. Uh, come in and we've just accepted that amount um, science teacher um, for instance may have um, Chris brothers brings in a lot of grants and so we've never really questioned the, the purpose of them I can certainly share after I will tell you um, we are going to uh, this is new this year um, I, I can't necessarily share they are voting tonight as well um, so they are actually voting on each project and it would be uh, out in front of them to to share them publicly tonight so I can share, I can send you the list um, tomorrow after they uh, have been voted with them as well. So you're, you're, you're voting the, the dollar amount is what you're voting. Okay. okay. It, it does make sense for FEF. I mean, we, we have a working relationship with them. We know the lengthy process that they go through to, to select those grants. And we know that they align with what we're trying to do. But if it were something else that was a little unusual, it would be nice to know. Sure. Makes sense. Nice. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, moving on. Act on FEF mini grants. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mike. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Chris. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, act on in-kind gift donation from the Valley Group equivalent to $9,218.71. I'd like to make that motion if that's okay. Okay, second. Thank you, Mike. Any discussion? Yes, um, so the, the Lawrence um, Greenhouse um, that's by the Vernal Pool, um, the, they actually uh, came and helped put it up. They also donated that the 9,000 uh, plus uh, was for certain um, materials for the greenhouse. Thank you, Valley Group. That was very generous. And I think um, thank you to the extremely generous student volunteer that helped build it. It's very much appreciated. Um, all any sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> any abstention? Seeing none. Act on Teamster contract twenty four to twenty seven for the custodians. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Great. Act on the SEIU contract 2024-2027 for food service. So moved. Second. On a roll. You're going faster. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Great. Act on SEI contract, SEIU contract 2024-2027, secretaries. So moved. Second. <laughs> you know, I think it's just a copy of the thing. It is. I get it now. It makes it easier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Great. Awesome. Act on the superintendent's recommendation for legal services by Mary Gans. So moved. Second. Thank you all. <laughs> Can you do it? Yeah, please. Can I? Yeah. Please. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Yes. So, um, as you know, um, Mary is resigning her position as, as of the end of this uh, year. I think she wants to spend more time um, doing uh, some things that one might do when they're not working full time, and then some. <laughs> um, however, her services are um, 
so beneficial to the district that I did ask her to submit a, um, uh, a letter of uh, a proposal uh, for legal services for the district so she can continue in the capacity um, that she currently is uh, for less hours. So, uh, so uh, I think that's it. Does she have any questions? Any questions? Margaret? I just want to say we're so fortunate that you consider continuing to work here on part time basis. Oh, so I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. I actually feel grateful that you're willing to continue. <laughs> <laughs> it's mutually beneficial. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any? What? All right. You throw me off. Like, I apologize. It's okay. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. That passed. Even though we don't want that. I mean, you know, selfishly. I totally get it. I'm just kidding. All right. Act on superintendent's recommendation for appointment of the director of student services. Lori. Excuse me. Sorry. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All right. I am making the recommendation uh, for the appointment of Sandy Capsimbellis to the Director of Student Services. I think that um, her abilities, um, knowledge, her expertise uh, in the area um, is, stands. I think that we all um, uh, know what a great job Sandy uh, has done as principal, uh, her background in special education, uh, and she will um, be an, an excellent choice for the Director of Student Services. Great. Um, uh, sorry, go ahead. I just want to say thank you to Joan. Um, I'm sorry. I just want to say thank you to Joan. Thank you. You'll be very missed. You yes. We're very yeah. excited for yes. you, yes. and hopefully you'll stick around and we'll see you sometimes. <laughs> it's been a pleasure working with everyone. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? It passes. Congratulations. Thank you very much for the vote of confidence. Um, be hard to leave the T ticket school, but I really look forward to supporting the district in this new role. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Margaret. I just want to say, you know. We, we need to thank you for the wonderful job that you've done here at Teen Ticket. It has been amazing and it's just a wonderful place and the students love it and the families love it. And so we're grateful for that and we look forward to continued good work for you. Thank you. I promise. <laughs> we don't doubt. <laughs> All right. Um, act on the summative evaluation of the superintendent. So moved. Second. Right. Kelly, you want to take it away? Uh, it just occurred to me that I'm logged in the wrong way, so I'm not going to be able to share my. Can you promote me so I can share my screen? Uh, I think that it should be a well to share now. If it was earlier, I think so. I'm still a pan. Uh, I'm not a panelist. Oh, you're not a panelist. Sorry. No, it won't let me log in because I, it thinks I'm somebody else. <laughs> The wrong email address. Thank you so much. In the meantime, the weather too. Great. Sorry. <laughs> Did everybody get a chance to go outside? Absolutely. Oh, good. There we go. There she is. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Okay, so just a quick review for those at home anticipating this very exciting presentation. Um, so we start with the self-assessment in the beginning of the year and then um, a development of goals for the superintendent to work on throughout the year then implementing the plan which is actually doing the job and then halfway through the year a formative assessment which brings us to where we are today which is the summative evaluation it's the conclusion of the process right before it starts all over again um, and results in a document that um, is Lori's uh, evaluation for the year so we do that by having each member prepare an end of cycle summative evaluation on their own that is their own assessment of 
the progress on the goals that we set at the start of the year, performance on the standards that were identified at the start of the year, and then an overall rating um, of performance for the year. And then a designee for the school committee, which was me this year, compiles all of those individual um, evaluations into one document that reflects the preponderance of the individual ratings. So it's not a, a regurgitation of every individual one. It is a summary of the overall um, sentiment of all of the individual evaluations. So this is the results of that. Um, so you can see their, their high, the um, overall preponderance of evidence in each category is circled in red. Can't see it. There we go. Um, so for instructional leadership, um, Lori received a proficient management and operations exemplary family and community engagement proficient and I can't see the last one. Professional, professional culture. Thank you. I have something hiding it on my screen. Uh, was proficient. Go to the next one. There we go. Um, these are the three goals that are more specific to Falmouth. The student learning goal was maintaining a focus on academic excellence while improving the Clipper experience for all students. And um, the preponderance of evidence was that Lori met that goal. The professional practice goal was related uh, to the capacity of members of the administrative team to effectively communicate, and that goal was also met. And then the district improvement goal, See again. Um, complete a comprehensive review of the business offices practices and procedures to improve effectiveness and increase transparency and that goal was exceeded. When you combine all of those um, evaluations, um, the overall ranking was proficient. So congratulations, Lori, on your Thank you. proficiency. It's actually, it sounds terrible when you say proficiency, but it's actually a, a rather good um, evaluation score. Um, and then I didn't know if you wanted to open it up, if anyone wanted to make it. Sure. Terry. First, I want to thank the committee because preponderance is a tough word. Um, it's kind of archaic, if you ask me. But anyway, thank you for all the work that the committee did. Um, every year, it's you know putting it all together and counting it all up. There was um, a, there was something that happened at the end of this year that um, wasn't on the document, um, and so I added in a comment about it, and I stated that it wasn't part of the document, but it was a comment I thought needed to be made, and that was that we the Falmouth District. Um, got a green ribbon award from the, the government. I think only 41 schools in the whole country. Is that number right, right? I think only 41 schools in the whole country got such an award. So it made it found the district exemplary. And Lori had started that work, like with the electric van that we got, um, learning, teaching the kids and us how to compost, which is not easy. Um, and all that. So we became an exemplary district. So I just thought that should be noted for the record on the um, evaluation. I, in that vein, I do want to mention that um, when uh, at our last sort of uh, mini school committee meeting that we had up specifically about the summative evaluation, um, as a committee in the summer, we have a retreat and we go over our goals and things that we want to work on. And one of the things is um, specifically this document. And I do have on our notes for the summer, among other things, um, to add a section for any comments non -mention not mentioned in the evaluation for exactly situations like Terry mentioned. So, um, you know, like Kelly just said, we uh, do the evaluation based on the superintendent's goals. We didn't know that we were going to get this, but it's definitely worth mentioning in her evaluation because it's a highlight. It's something to be celebrated. Um, so that, you know, I like to say that every time we have a, a, an anything, I like to look at it as a learning lesson. So 
we are taking this back in the summer and um, adding a section for any comments not mentioned in the evaluation. So I just want to highlight that. Mike. I have a question, and it might be for Kelly or you, Melissa, but the this is the collection of everyone's evaluation that's kind of averaged to what this is. Do we release the individual evaluations for the public to see? Um, I don't, I don't, I mean, we don't, we don't really release any of the stuff for the public. I mean, it's not part of our packet, so, I mean, but it's public information, I think. Public That's the best answer I can come up with is, it's public we don't, information. it's public information, but yeah. we don't, like, put them out there. We're not going to, like, put them on the website or anything. It's, like, not, it's not in our packet. Yeah. It's, so it's not, not in the summative, uh, summative evaluation packet, right? It's not in our school committee packet. Okay. I'm just using that as like, because that's the thing that's on the website that you can just download. So it's not, it's not part of that. But they're not a secret. So they're public information if people wanted to look for them. Like if somebody asked for a FOIA to look at everyone's evaluations, they could? I think that we'd have to, I don't know. I don't know the yes, answer. Yes, because I, I, I so. asked that last year, because I was doing the leadership. Yes, every single person's evaluation is a public document. Anybody can just ask to look at it. So we don't, we don't do have anything to do with it. Once That's we right. submit them, they're public documents. They're kept by the district. Thank you, Terry. I didn't really know. Yeah. I think that if I could, Melissa, to Terry's point Thanks. about the comments that might not fit in categories, you know, having those evaluations public as opposed to just the summative, summative, whatever the word is, uh, would be beneficial to the people in town, in my opinion, so. Margaret. <clears throat> well, since you mentioned it, I, I'm, I'm going to make a recommendation about the summer retreat. Um, we'll have two new, two new people as school committee members. Um, when I was a school committee member, a new one, and I talked to others who've uh, felt the same way. It would be very important at that school community retreat. And Terry, you tried to do this a year ago, and um, the, the training of the school of the um, evaluation. And what happened was, and it was not malicious, but people began to talk about how to improve it. So we never got the training. I think it would be essential to have someone from MASC come and talk to us about the training at that retreat and do that in the beginning of the school year. So when we go through the school year, um, all the new folks and those of us who've been around for a long time will know exactly what's happening and know exactly how to look at it in terms of, of the evaluation. To and, I think that, and I think that would be essential for the retreat this summer. To be clear, Margaret, do you mean MASC training on how to um, navigate through the evaluation? They do a training about supervision of, of the superintendent if you've gone to the... I've been to charting the course. Yeah. So this is just, you want a training for our committee, a refresher. Um, Not a refresher for people who've never been through it, uh, but a training for, for all of us. I went through charting the course, and I think that what happens, or what happens often, is that people have different opinions about this and that. And I think if someone from MASC comes, we can ask the questions about concerns that people have about how to do it correctly and how to do it within their guidelines. I love that idea, but I wonder if we could um, perhaps do it closer to evaluation time? No, do it in the beginning of the year because people need to know in the beginning of the year how to do the evaluation because hearing information through the year you know, they can put it within the framework of the evaluation. People need to be trained in the beginning of the year and not just the, the day before the, or the week or month before they're going to do the evaluation. Okay. I think we should have a workshop just for that, not part of the retreat. I agree. Well, because there's so many other things that take fine. time out. We had a workshop last year, but we didn't have any outside help, so. Well, well you tried to have a workshop, but it, it it got upended. It was not malicious, but people were. Well, this year we had a workshop. Okay. Not we the had... year before. This yeah, year it was. Yeah. Okay. Workshop noted. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, I think that the discussion about process is really important, and I think maybe the conversation also goes there because the result of the evaluation at this point 
isn't really controversial, which is a really good thing. And I want to go back to Kelly's point that proficient doesn't sound glowing. Um, but the, the goals that were set um, were goals that involved um, a fair bit of, of growth and learning this year. And um, I've been really impressed with just the translation from high level goals to very granular action items. And proficient means that every single one of those action items throughout the entire year was accomplished, right? Not like it's a 75%, not a, um, so the, the bar for proficient let alone exceeds is, is high. And so I just wanna um, thank you, Lori, for, um, for, for just doing a really good job in not only meeting all of those expectations, but also documenting that, that really, really well. Um, and yeah, congratulations on the, the evaluation. Thank you, Greg. Did all she said. <laughs> I was gonna say all that same stuff, so I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save us the time. <laughs> You know, and I have difficulty with the format of the evaluation, so that's why. I also want to say that I think that the school system here in Falmouth is really noteworthy. And we can really thank the leadership of, of Dr. Dillon for that. Um, beyond the evaluation, our school system is really very impressive. We can always continue to get better, but we really need to thank Dr. Dillon for that. Thank you, Mark. Excellent. Any other comments? All right, that's great. Uh, moving on to the superintendent update. I don't think we need Oh, we did need we <laughs> All right, that, we, we're just, everything's great. Okay. <laughs> we have to vote. All in favor of the super, the summative evaluation of the superintendent. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Durr. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Moving on to the superintendent update. All right. Dr. Great. Durr. So um, another very exciting opportunity came our way. Uh, <coughs> uh, Farming Falmouth had contacted me uh, when they learned that we were um, moving in the direction of a master chef and wanting um, opportunities how could we could collaborate. And then there was an opportunity for a mass farm to school. It is, um, it's a, an initiative at the state level. Um, you have to apply. Um, so we applied together um, and we were actually accepted. And so what does this mean? It means that uh, we are committed as a partnership um, through the year. Uh, we, uh, mass uh, farm to school um, works with us. We get assigned a coach um, to help us uh, develop a strategic plan and how we can um, uh, just further our, uh, well, first set our goals and objectives, but further our initiative of using uh, fresh uh, produce um, in, in our school. So that's one of um, our main goals that we had established. Um, there is a uh, two-day retreat in September at the Wright Lock Farm in Winchester, Massachusetts. Um, I googled it and it looks fantastic. I'm very excited about this opportunity. Um, from Farming Falmouth, um, Ellie Costa and Andy Buckingham, and um, myself and Melissa uh, as a team member. Also, we have uh, uh, Andrea Burns, uh, Carmela uh, Mayeski, Ben Harden, um, and our new master chef will be a part of that team um, that we will be working together um, all year on how does that farm to school um, you know, actually work and, and become a realization. I am so excited to be ha able to have you know, a coach in this area that's actually gonna help us set goals um, and, and figure out how we can make this happen. So um, we just got word um, a week ago, so I'm very excited about um, this opportunity. Um, if I can, in the acceptance letter, they stated um, they received many strong applications from schools and districts across the state and were impressed with our team's makeup goals, objectives, and readiness to engage in a year of farm to school action planning. So, that's great. Thank you. Okay, excellent. We're going to have fun, aren't we? Yeah, we yeah. are. <laughs> All right. Um, I would like to announce um, two new department heads. Um, uh, the department head for world language, we had a retirement um, this year, and Molly Drain um, uh, went through a rigorous um, 
uh, applicant process and uh, was recommended uh, and uh, we offered the position and she has accepted. So um, Molly Drink, she's been work first for four years at the high school um, uh, as a Spanish teacher. And so we're very excited to have her uh, lead. We did this year change the um, world language from a 712 to a K12. Uh, and um, so it'll be a year of action planning um, so that we can really start that language uh, at the um, elementary level as we have been wanting. So I am looking forward to that's really gonna come to fruition. Um, our second department head um, uh, is for CTE and Janet Rocha. Um, has uh, accepted the position as the department head. We're very excited. She's done a lot of this work over the years um, and uh, very heavily over the last two years uh, around this, this work. And so to have her step into um, the position, it is nice to have two clippers um, be able to um, move from unit A to, um, to unit B uh, in, in the district. So I'm very happy with both of those. Can I just say thank you to um, Pat DiPolo, yes. her years and years of service and time with Fallon. Uh, I wish her a pleasant retirement, and um, I'm sure Molly will do well, but she has big shoes to fill. And um, thank you, Ms. DiPolo, for all of your time. That's great. Yes. Um, school choice update. Uh, we have accepted 30 students to date. This is um, quite a large year of uh, school choice students, and it is record high for the kindergarten. We've accepted 21 students uh, in the kindergarten across um, the district. Um, we have one first grader, one third grader, um, uh, two seventh grade, two ninth grade, two tenth grade, and one eleventh grade. Um, and I'd like to share some quotes uh, from the parents on their applications. Um, I found these um, just heartwarming. Um, the first one is, uh, me and my husband work in Falmouth. Our child goes to preschool in Falmouth, so our community is here. Explanation point, explanation point, explanation point. Uh, the second one, um, her sister, referring to the student that was an application, her sister and brother went to the Falmouth schools and we had the best experience. Um, a third one, my child attends daycare in Falmouth and takes dance classes in Falmouth. The town and community have become our home and family. I would be forever grateful for my child to have the opportunity to continue her education in this community. Um, the fourth one, our child is on the varsity soccer team at his current school. He has shown interest in joining the track team, which his current school doesn't offer. He has uh, found limitations to social opportunities at his current school due to the size. He seeks a college education currently focusing on entrepreneurship. And the next one, um, I'm sharing just you know five out of the 30, but um, they, there was a lot of great ones. But Falmouth Public Schools has a tradition for excellence. We believe our child would be uh, benefit greatly as she begins college prep. There's some nice com um, comments I wanted to share with everyone here because I get the opportunity to read them all and I want to share some of them. Um, I'm going to uh, ask. Paul, and then um, I've got several more um, items after that, but Paul, do you want to share the information on your monthly budget sure. report? Thank you. Thank you. I'm feeling those quotes are going to appear in some marketing material. <laughs> <laughs> or at least they should. They should. Right. <laughs> Perhaps our uh, our uh, yeah, exactly. I was trying to come up with. I didn't want to say that. Our is it the queen, Terry? Is it the queen of uh, flyers? Or the queen of flyers? Uh, we, 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 yeah. we might see one. <laughs> so, you know, the good news is that uh, we're right on target um, for the year. So that's uh, that's the most important message. Um, just going down to the bottom line, um, we had year-to-date total expenses encumbered around forty-one million four twenty-seven. Um, this is out of the budget of the fifty-six million three twenty-eight. Um, this budget went up slightly just because of the article transfer, as you mentioned. Uh, you asked a question about last time, up about one hundred fifty thousand. Um, so we have remaining in our budget $14,901,000. Um, most of um, the vast majority of that $14,700,000 is salaries. Uh, our projections of salaries put us right at that number, so we're in good shape. Um, we have a little bit more available uh, in non-salaries items. Uh, 
if you look up above um, on non salaries under the district wide, that's kind of the blue gray free up from the bottom. Uh, on salary line is about 87,000. Um, in the red, uh, would we'll roughly be probably projection at the end of the year about $300,000 of expense there and going to. Uh, uh, into the stabilization draw that we uh, we had approved this year at town meeting. Um, so overall, the message is it's very positive for the district, uh, uh, and for quite quite frankly, for all the support the town gave us in in April at town meeting. Um, so uh, we're in good shape. Thank you, Paul. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions? I just like to comment, please. Thank you to the administration and you, Paul. Um, not every community is getting this information as evidenced by so many communities that are so over in their budget for not only this year, but going into next year. And we're in great shape. And thank you to everyone. Great. All right. Um, so, uh, Henry was unable to be here tonight, but um, he's been giving uh, regular updates through the year um, about the equity audit. And so um, we have uh, now the uh, findings and we're ready to share. Uh, so um, Jenny uh, Portillo, um, the senior, excuse me, a, um, education equity specialist from MAC um, will be joining us at the May 28th school committee meeting to discuss the findings. Um, additionally, we're excited um, to announce that we are going to hold a school community forum uh, scheduled on June 10th uh, at the Falmouth High School Library at 6 o'clock. Um, so we'll do a high level summary for the school committee and then we're going to get uh, an hour and a half, a 90 minute session uh, on June 10th. We'll get deeper into the, um, the actual data and um, then uh, lead into discussion. Uh, about next steps, like what does this lead to? Um, and so um, so I encourage um, either tune in on the, the May 28th or um, join us on June 10th or do both um, and uh, so that we can learn more. So about the equity audit. On June 10th at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. at the uh, Fountain High School Library. Got that. Okay, that's great. Um, there's a donation that I um, I would like to thank uh, Michael and uh, Kathleen Miller for donating $250 to composting. Um, I'm just so pleased that uh, a community member um, is recognizing what we're doing and that it means as much to, to community members as it does to us. So, um, so I just wanted to publicly thank them for the, for the money uh, to go to, toward composting. And Molly did a great job updating the composting, and Sam followed up. Um, but uh, I was going to share that uh, we are very close of getting our um, the shed at the uh, admin building so that our community can start composting uh, at that location. Uh, so I am, and I am just very proud of our high school students that that they actually built the the first shed for the composting for um, the community. So thank you to our students and everyone that's helped make that um, happen. Um, the Multicultural Fair this year is May 18th um, from 2 to 4. Uh, that's a Saturday at the Mullen Hall Elementary School. Uh, the event is free, so I just want to invite everyone. It's really a very incredible um, opportunity. Um, it's just community oriented. Um, we have lots of um, volunteers, lots of people come. It's great for kids. Um, so just want to put a plug for that. Graduation uh, June 1st at 10.30. Uh, on the Falmouth High School Monte Purpose Field. Um, please let Sharon know uh, by May 23rd if the school committee members uh, plan to attend. Um, and can I just give a shout out to Melissa uh, on this? Um, she has graciously deferred um, handing out the diplomas to Kelly this year. And I think that's, that's um, so exciting. Uh, and I, and I, think, I think it's wonderful though. And, it's, and I, at the start of my hope, a really great tradition. Yeah, sure. I'm well, really excited. I have to say, when I was first on a bazillion years ago, and I had a lovely uh, mentor, two, three kind of mentors here at the table here tonight, it was always assumed that if you had a graduate, if you were a parent of a graduate, that the offer was made. Um, in my time, the offer has been made once, and the family or the student declined. So. Um, 
I, it was only natural for me to offer that. Like I, I couldn't not offer it. Well, and it's so, so special. I, you know, when I graduated, one of my um, classmates' dad was the chair, and it was it was a big deal, you know, to have your your parent hand you your diploma or have you know a, your friend's dad hand you your diploma. It's a big deal. So um, I get it. So I thank you again. No need to thank you. <laughs> I'm happy. For Very thoughtful of you. It is. Well, sometimes I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then my last, I just want to thank the custodians uh, at all of our schools this year for hosting. Um, it's been great being in the schools again and getting the highlights from our students. That's what we're all about. And so thank you for the custodians for making it happen at all of our schools this year. This is our last one, and we return back to the Edmonton. Yes, it's been great going to all the schools. Yes. All right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Routine business. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of April 23rd, 2024? Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, any discussion? Two tiny copy edits. Please. Uh, the Together We Can. Um, it, sh it says retired. It should be retired, I think. Did I get that right? Or did I get that backwards? And in the budget update, it talks about uh, the last sentence. It says addition. It should be additional. OK. Any other edits or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Great. Moving on to committee member reports. Terry. My monthly reports from my two subcommittees. Um, the first one is the collaborative. Um, I don't know if people know the collaborative has a lot, a lot of special projects. They meet with Sonia or Lori or Paul sometimes. Um, what are the needs of districts? And they they do a lot of things that you don't realize unless you're on you go to their meetings anyway one thing that they've been doing which was great for tape, tape educators where they have the sei endorsement but now um the desi is has an app and it's become virtual classes so that's one service that they're not going to be doing anymore okay um the other thing i wanted to talk about was vips um we didn't have they didn't have a meeting last week or last month so i didn't announce the Student of the month was Nick Greedy in April, and for May it's Harley Smith. Um, the Junior Achievement um, Pilot Program began last week at Morse Pond School. It had been originally for third and fourth graders, um, and they did a pilot um, for fifth graders, and then it will now be expanded for fifth and sixth graders in the fall. Um, and. The other thing that was started last week, a new initiative is called Build Your Future. It's a um, lecture series during Clipper time. Um, and that just, as I said, began last week. So I don't know how that's going, but I'm sure it's good. Um, and the other thing I wanted to talk about was the Memorial Garden. The Memorial Garden ceremony will be typically, as it is the Friday before Memorial Day, it's going to change next year um, because I don't know, maybe the holiday had some um, things that didn't overlap. So anyway, it doesn't matter. That'll come about next year. But it's the Friday before Memorial Day. It's the um, students who have passed away while Falmouth High School was called Falmouth High School. Um, and it's a great service. Um, it's just such a moving service. Margaret, can you? Do we know what time the time? The time, you know, I, it's, I don't know. It's either okay. 3 or 3.30. Uh, okay. I'll let you know. Yeah, I'll let you know the time. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Any other committee reports? I just want to mention, um, speaking of VIPs, uh, I was in the VIPs office today, and uh, Tracy Andrade asked me to remind everybody that the VIPs Volunteer Appreciation Evening will be on the Island Queen this year on Thursday, June 6th from 5.30 to 7.30. It will be catered by Eat Your Heart Out Catering and music by Puffy Elvis. Um, 
You can get more information on their website um, and they'll recognize their outstanding volunteer of the year. Uh, and you can nominate a volunteer when you also go to the website. So just want to put that shout out per their request when I was in the office today. Um, I also want to say, I just want to uh, make mention that uh, this is Heather Goldstone's last meeting with us. And I want to thank you for your service for the last year and wish you nothing but the best um, for your opportunities moving forward. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you. So <laughs> It's really been an honor to, to work with, with all of you, and I have learned a ton, and it is definitely bittersweet, so I'm going to stop so I don't start crying. <laughs> Any requests for information? Could I just say, oh, even though um, Bill is in here, I think we should recognize. Oh, yes. He, that was he, un, unintended, yeah. He, um, Bill Dorfman Thank served you. for three years on the committee. I don't maybe, was it just three or two? It wasn't yeah, hard. it was three years. Yeah, yeah we yeah. should definitely, yes, yeah. thank you. Terry. So um, we should give him a round of applause too. For yeah. His, 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 his. Yeah. his opportunities moving forward as well. And uh, I'm sorry he's not here this evening. Okay, any requests for information? Oh, seeing none. So moved. <laughs> Thanks for the second. Excellent. I'll give it to Heather. Oh, all right. We'll give it to Heather. It's our last one. Heather Goldstone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.